Joining me now is US lawyer Alan Dershowitz and columnist for The Guardian, Jonathan Freeland. Uh, Jonathan, let me start with you. Also, you wrote a, a terrific piece for the Jewish Chronicle about this, uh, some of which, I have to say, I, I used to frame some of my questions uh, for Benjamin Netanyahu. It was so beautifully phrased, so thank you for that. Um, your position on this is that you, you believe... I think you both believe that there's a comparison to be made here with Donald Trump. Jonathan, you go first, because I think it's not a favourable comparison that you would draw. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a comparison to be drawn um, in the sense of somebody who has a total disregard for democratic norms. And in this case, it's being played out in the sense of those things which make a democracy function. It isn't just a matter of the ballot box and whoever gets the most votes is then in total control. A liberal democracy uh, exists with, yes, majority uh, power in, for example, a parliament, but then a whole lot of breaks, uh, as you used the phrase in your questions to the uh, to the Prime Minister, you talk about checks and balances. Israel's really quite unusual. Again, you brought this out in the interview. It really has none. I mean, there isn't a written constitution. Again, you said that. There isn't a second chamber in Parliament. And therefore, the only break, the only restraint on a Prime Minister in the Israeli system, it's very, very unusual, is this body, the Supreme Court. So when uh, Netanyahu was telling you that, you know, it's got out of control, it's got far too much power, that's partly a function of a system where nobody else can put a break on the Prime Minister uh, except that court. Now, in the United States, there were all kinds of breaks and restraints on Donald Trump, a written constitution, courts that he couldn't uh, control, a Senate, a House, all kinds of things. Israel doesn't have that. So even if they've got the same impulses, Netanyahu is in some ways much more dangerous because Israel allows a Prime Minister, if they want to, if they're bent on doing what he's doing now, to concentrate all power in their own hands. Right. Alan Dershowitz, I mean, that, that seemed to me, my takeaway from the interview was, this just seemed to me, he, he has it in his head that the judiciary, the Supreme Court in particular in Israel, has gone too far to the left and is now being deliberately restrictive and obstructive to his government, which is to the right. But he also acknowledged that the, he doesn't want the pendulum to swing right the other way, which is what, how many people are categorising this. That they think that what he's trying to do really is say, right, you've got too much control, I'm seizing all control. And that is the behaviour of an autocrat. I think both sides have exaggerated their claims. Uh, I think the judiciary in Israel has gone a bit too far. My oldest friends in Israel are Benjamin Netanyahu, who I've known for 50 years, and Ehud Barak, who engineered the judicial revolution, who I've known for 55 years. And there's a reasonable argument that both sides have gone too far, which is why we need uh, compromise. I think it's absolutely essential that the parties uh, get together, uh, sit down, and resolve this. And there are ways of resolving it. I've written a series of articles. The Supreme Court should have power and final word over basic civil liberties, human rights, minority rights, but it should not have the final word over who serves in, in the government. By the way, your previous guest says there are no checks and balances in Israel. That is totally and completely wrong. There have been six elections in the last, what, five years or five elections. That's the ultimate check and balance in a democracy. Throw the people out if you don't like them, if you can't maintain your government together. Very, very few countries in the world have judicial review. Israel may have more judicial review than any other country in the world, uh, but I'm on the side of the Israeli uh, Supreme Court. Uh, but I do think that both sides have points to make. Uh, this is not an issue that generally results in worldwide attention, judicial reform. When's the last time we've had demonstrations over judicial reform? Judicial reform is a surrogate for opposition to the right-wing elements in the government. And I understand that. I've met with uh, Smutrich. I've met with Ben Gavir. And there is good reason for protesting them. But if the same judicial reforms had been advocated by people at the center of the party, there wouldn't be such demonstrations. Okay. I, want I to think bring there should back. be judicial reforms, but not as extreme as either side right. wants uh, them. Uh, Jonathan, I mean, the other part of this, which cannot be overlooked, and I raise this with the Prime Minister, is that he is himself currently still undergoing a criminal trial for bribery and corruption. And, of course, people are saying, well, of course he wants to control the judiciary because that means he can then control what may or may not happen to him or, indeed, future leaders who get themselves into similar positions. Yes. Yeah, this is the crucial point. I mean, I, I think, you know, great respect for Professor 
Dershowitz's analysis there, although I did like his position more in January when he was saying, if I were in Israel, I'd be at those, at those protests. That's because this isn't a debate in a uh, legal seminar room among, you know, Harvard Law students. This, and it's understood by the people who are heading to, onto the streets, this isn't just some abstract matter of uh, refining a few tweaks to the precise uh, arrangements of the Israeli constitution. This is a power grab. It's happening now because uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is on trial for three very serious counts of corruption that where, if he were convicted, he would end up in jail. And he does not want to go to jail, and therefore he wants to have some control over the judges of the Supreme Court who would hear, if it came to it, his appeal. So this is pretty naked. I mean, people, there, no comparison is perfect, but people have said this is as if, in during Watergate, Richard Nixon decided to tear up the Constitution and make the Supreme Court something which he, whose members he could decide. And in his interview with you just now, he, Netanyahu tried to uh, suggest somehow that this would be not him, it would be politicians. It would be his appointees, Likud member sort of hacks, who would sit on the committee that would do his bidding and put in, if they got their way, judges who would do his bidding. So this is serious business. Those people on the streets would not be there if this was just an abstract theoretical okay. debate. They're there because they understand well, what's at risk for their country. OK, and then finally, just quickly, um, this poll, disagree. very worrying poll, I, I that American wanted... support from Democrats yeah. and 18 to 29s moving away from Israel now to Palestinians. Well, first of all, that's been a movement of young people for a long time. But I want to talk to the comparison between Trump and Netanyahu. I wrote a new book called Get Trump, which is about the efforts to try to prevent Trump from running for office by illegally and improperly going after him by weaponizing the criminal justice system. There have been efforts to do the same thing with Netanyahu. These three charges against him are totally phony charges, and they're designed to remove him from office. And nothing in the judicial reform would make it easier to win the case. His case will be won in front of trial judges that were appointed years and years ago and that serve for life. So I think there are analogies. There are analogies because a lot of people in Israel want to get Netanyahu, and a lot of people in the United States want to get Trump. But that's where the analogies okay. stop. I think we ought to think about these on their merits and not try to personalize them because I think these, these issues of judicial reform are serious okay. and we should sit down and resolve them with both sides getting an opportunity to make their points. Well, I suspect that's exactly what's now going to happen because I think Benjamin Netanyahu, my sense was he's been pretty shocked by the reaction and the scale of it. And I think above I all else, he's proven himself to be a survivor and a pragmatic politician. So I suspect he's going to get around a table and water this down. But for now, Alan Dershowitz, Jonathan Friedland, thank you both very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it.